What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. Today I wanna to bust one of the biggest reseller myths, which is you have to stop buying. Um, you really don't have to stop buying. There's two things that really clog up people's stores. One is buying stuff that they don't have the capacity to sell. So actually behind me, you can see, this is our second pickup of the day. Um, I sell between 1,000 and 1,400 packages per day. We sell roughly eight to 12 pallets a day, depending on what we're selling. So in a, any given month, we're selling 240 pallets of stuff that are coming in and going out. Um, if you guys have been watching my videos, this was completely packed to the rafters just like a month ago. Um, we had 30,000 pairs of Kerry Yuma shoes and we were selling on average about 500 pairs a day when we were selling them. And now we really just have about 20 or 30 pairs left, not that much. It's really, really important because you should not stop buying stuff that's really good. That stuff moves really quickly. I wish I could buy more stuff that sells really quickly because that stuff is easier to sell. Um, as we walk through here, the inventory that I have been saving is kind of the better stuff. Reigns is one of the brands that did the best for me. So I actually kept a lot of the bags that sold for the most value because those are easy to sell. I wish I could over buy that stuff, but the stuff that's like, crazy fast selling and for a great profit is not that common as a reseller. So this stuff is stuff I paid like $10 for and sells for 50 or more. These are like the good bags. But again, look at how gigantic this space is and that's all we have left. So I don't recommend you stop buying. You can just increase your threshold. If you have too much stuff, there's two things you can do. You can either sell things faster or you can increase your average sale price, which will reduce the amount of things that you buy. So for me, I'm really looking for stuff that's $125 MSRP or higher. Stuff that's lower than that, I consider just filler. We sell it um, kind of to keep the lights on. It's, it's an interesting model with this because buying bulk and liquidation, you really don't know what kind of stuff is coming in and I need a lot of manpower to go through it. What happens is if you buy, this capacity is big enough for around eight truckloads. If you just buy one truckload and it's a six truckload deal, essentially you could be getting the one truckload that's bad. I'm trying to minimize my risk by buying all the truckloads so I can see the full manifest. Usually when you buy a wholesale liquidation, random things, you don't get to see what you're actually buying. That's why I think it's so risky. But when you're buying the biggest lot, uh, my next deal coming in here is Spanx. It's 105,000 units. It's a lot. It's a lot of stuff that's coming in here. It's like 60 or 70 pallets of stuff. And in order to minimize my risk, I want to sell all of it for as close to retail as I can. And again, I have to have the capacity to sell through it. So for us, inventory will fill this up and empty probably about every 60 days. And the capacity is right there. So I can't order more than like 240 pallets because it would just clog it up and I have to get more than one unit. Um, I have the unit on the other side for my other stream. That's mainly because of sound. But now that it's pretty empty, I might actually move it over. And as you guys know, I'm kind of in a holding pattern because I'm waiting for a bigger space. So right now, it's kind of interesting because my business is way bigger than before, but it really is just limited by space right now because I have an excellent team. They could sell more stuff if I wanted them to. It would just change the size of the lot. Right now, we're kind of in this mode where we're just kind of just making sure that we're profitable and then just hanging until we get a big space because I don't want to, as much as I like changing things, I want things to stay pretty much the same. And I was just thinking about, um, there's a, a chain that I've never been to called Raising Cane, but I was thinking about that company and I was thinking, my God, I actually think that that restaurant is easier to run than what I do. Cause like every single day I have to come in here, the product is completely different. The situation is different, completely different. My staff is completely different. Their schedules are different. And the people that are on the stream are completely different. There's so many variables every single day. I would love to just sell fried chicken, French fries, Texas toast and soda. They have four things on their menu. Here we have In-N-Out Burger. They just have a single, a double French fries, shakes, soda, that's it. That sounds really nice. After doing all this and selling all these random things, you can see here on these lots that we have prepared for our final show tomorrow, we have a mix of everything that is left. These types of shows actually do pretty good because it's sort of like an index fund. There's like a little bit for everybody inside of here versus if we're just selling one SKU, just one brand, it can be kind of scary because um, it can saturate your own market. And as you guys know, I sold, I basically created a whole new market for these carry issues by selling 30,000 pairs, but I'm down to probably the last 200 pairs. We'll sell them to some happy customers. They get a really good deal and whatnot. And 
we'll move on to the next thing. Uh, if you guys want to check it out on whatnot.com slash invite slash daily refinement, you get $15 off your first purchase. If you use my code, I would appreciate it. If you sign up using that code, buy something from myself or somebody else, support the whole reseller ecosystem. I think that a lot of people are confused by whatnot and saying that whatnot is only for resellers or is only resellers buying stuff. I don't agree with that because based on the prices that I get, there are plenty of people buying to keep for themselves. So as we're growing, um, you can see here, there's like all these new opportunities to pop up. Like as an example, um, I spent about $5,000 in my life on hangers, which is really annoying now because I have so many hangers, I literally throw them away. I'm selling hangers for like 50 for $5 just so it's worth it for someone to come buy me a beer to take a whole handful. But it's like di different things happen. I was buying these before, now I'm throwing them away. Like the, the market's changed and there's so much overstock right now and the companies aren't even taking it off the hanger because the companies spent 40 cents every single hanger and they're just throwing it away because they don't have time to take it off because there's so much overstock. Um, back here, more cardboard. This is like the final of our blank NYC shorts. There's not too much left. We have a good amount of Prana swimwear. So this will be gone tomorrow. This whole unit will be gone tomorrow. And the next time you watch a video, this whole thing will be completely full again. So that's just how it goes. It ebbs and flows. It kind of makes me want to start some type of rental business because when you rent something to somebody, hopefully they bring it back and now you don't need to go find something else to rent. Like those exotic car companies sound really cool because you can rent out a Lamborghini 50 times make enough to repair it and get new tires and curb rash and all that and then get another supercar and then keep doing that and just over time grow the amount of things that you can rent. But for me, this thing empties out and comes back every single 60 days. Right here we have t-shirts being sorted by size and honestly this is going to be like three days of selling and that will be gone. And on the other side you guys saw the shoes also be gone in a week and it's very interesting. So this is why I kind of think about everything being temporary anyway. Because when you are, you know, when I was filling out my taxes, I told you guys this before, but there's a box that says, did your spouse die this year? And I thought one day I'll actually check that box. So like, or she'll check the box for me. So everything is temporary. If I do a really good job of taking care of myself, I'll have 50 more tax returns to fill out. Um, but everything is temporary. Make the best with what you have, with what you can, with all your resources. And I just want you to realize you need space. You need time to actually process it. So before you overbuy, do you have time? Do you have space? Most people actually can come up with the money. That's the surprising part. Lots of people have all their money tied up in their inventory. It's not that they can't afford it. It's just that they end up buying inventory that's too cheap or they buy beyond their capacity. It's good inventory, but they don't have time to list. So let me know in the comment section below if you're overbuying because you don't have enough space um, or because you don't have enough time to list. Let me know and we'll talk to you guys next time.